This did not happen last time. I did not expect this to happen. I don't know what to do right now, guys. Hello, friends, and not yet friends. Welcome back to Wheel of Tofu here on Mary's Test Kitchen, where we're using a traditional method of making tofu and applying it to non-traditional ingredients. Finally, it's time for chickpeas. You guys have been asking for this forever, and I sort of already answered this question. Will it tofu? However, I feel like maybe I over the chickpeas, like maybe that has something to do with it, or maybe not. Because looking at the um, <laughs> nutrition information, I have a feeling that we might have a kidney bean-like situation on our hands. I don't think this is working at all. This is not gonna work. 100% is not gonna work. But I'm gonna try it again properly on camera for you anyways, because well, you asked for it. And I love to give you what you want. As always, we're gonna start with 454 grams of dried ingredient. And that is of course one pound or 16 ounces. Oh, I have 451. See, after I collect all the peas that I dropped, but we'll have. Next, I'm gonna soak the chickpeas in plenty of cold water. And nothing is going to stop me from making tofu from this tomorrow. Pop one of these mason top lids on here. I really like these because, well, they're easy to use. They don't rust. Right, and then this will go in the fridge and you will see in a second. I feel like I jinxed myself. It's Wednesday, not Tuesday, and I might have just screwed up by over soaking again. But I don't have time to start over. And this is where my daily adaptogenic habit really helps with stressful times. Of course, I'm talking about my daily AG1. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring the video today. One scoop of this delicious foundational nutrition supplement contains adaptogens like ashwagandha, reishi mushroom, and green tea extract, to name a few. These plant-based ingredients and whole food sourced vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and prebiotics work together to help with stress, energy, focus, immune health, gut health, healthy aging, and more. I mix it with water and it becomes this refreshing light drink with natural pineapple and vanilla flavors that I crave every morning. Good thing it's vegan and keto friendly. I've been taking it daily for about a year and a half now and it really does help me feel better. I find it easier to go with the flow, roll with the punches, turn problems into opportunities. Part of it might be one and a half years more experience and wisdom, but a big part of it is just feeling better in my body. So much so that I tell everyone I love to try it. And I'm asking you to check it out too. Go to my link in the description to get a free one year supply of AG Vitamin D3 plus K2, plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. The Vitamin D is of course super helpful for immune support. And these travel packs are just handy, especially for this time of year. I'm so happy that many of you have already tried it and let me know that you love it too. Thanks again to AG1 and back to this jar of soaking chickpeas. We are just going to empty the water. And just so we know, As usual, we have to blend this. So I'm gonna put half in the blender with hands this time, I guess. This is promising. This is already easier to squeeze than the first time I did this. Oh yeah, so um, the first time I actually tried making to chickpea tofu this way was last year. And it was such a disaster um, <laughs> that even though you guys have requested this video for a long time, many times, I have put it off until now. Because last time I just, well, life happened yet again. I left the chickpeas soaking for mm, way too long. Let's just say it was way too long. And uh, 
I knew it was gonna be disaster as soon as I opened that jar of chickpeas and smelled it. <laughs> But I tried anyways, this was off camera. I didn't bother to film this one. And like I thought, it was, it was a disaster. It really turned me off from trying chickpeas again. And also looking at the nutritional values, seeing how much starch I would have to remove and comparatively little protein. And mind you, I had only tried, um, I believe fava beans back then. And lentils, right. And this is going a lot quicker than the split green peas or the yellow peas from a little while ago. The difference might be in the hot soak versus a cold soak. We don't know. It's hard to tell. We won't know until we really try it. That is to say, we're not gonna we're not gonna learn today. Oh cat underfoot. Hey, Chester, do you want to go outside? All right, then. You enjoy. This is a good hand workout. I used to feel like this part is a pain, which it still is kind of, but I like to think of it as a good like, hand and forearm workout. Just reframing this helps me to persevere. <laughs> All right. Now we have a lot of pulp and we're about to make more. We'll do the same thing to the other half of the soaked chickpeas. grams of this half and 494. Oh no. Note to self, that went in the freezer. After cleaning off the table, I can already see separation here, but I'm gonna let this sit for 40 minutes as is my usual standard and see what happens. Let's see. Yeah. It's quite a bit more starch settled. I still think maybe we can get more. So I'm gonna leave it another 20 minutes. Partly because I wanna see what happens and partly because um, my camera batteries need to charge. Okay, bye. All right, my friends. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. And here is where we are at. So yes, we did increase the amount of starch settled at the bottom over time. There's always a chance if we wait longer, it will settle even more. We'll collect more starch at the bottom, but we're on a schedule, my friends, so I'm going to transfer this milk over without disturbing the starch layer at the bottom. feeling the starch layer at the bottom. So, gonna be a little more careful right now since we're so close. What's interesting is I'm not seeing the starch kick up like as much as in other milks that we've had. Oh, it's starting to kick up actually. <laughs> Spoke too soon. All right, so I'm gonna leave the rest because I don't want to inadvertently add starch into the main bowl, but look at that. Oh yeah, there's that starch and water effect where you can press it and it's like hard and you let it go and it becomes liquidy. So if you're all right with eating starch, you can of course just add this to your sauces instead of using cornstarch. 
You can just use that. You can dry this out, make a flour out of it. You'd probably kick this up with some plant-based milk seasonings and use that for your batter if you're frying up something to make it nice and crispy. As for myself, those who know already know, I cannot eat starch <laughs> or very much of it without paying the consequences. So I'm going to put this away for another time. Nothing goes to waste in this household because there are starch eaters. I can, well, one one starch eater. <laughs> I can serve this too. Chickpea milk looking good. Time to get it on the stove. Turn the heat to high. Grab my laser thermometer and my flat edge spatula so that I can stir the bottom so that nothing burns on the bottom and uh, check the temperature as we go. I want this to come to a simmer and then hold it at a simmer for 10 minutes to cook the chickpea milk through. Remember, chickpeas, like most legumes, are going to have anti-nutrients that you do want to cook so that you don't get an upset stomach. It's starting to really smell cooked. Like it has a nice, pleasant broth kind of smell to it. It's milky and a bit nutty, so it doesn't have that raw chickpea smell anymore, which is interesting because it hasn't even started simmering yet, but okay. <laughs> I'll take it. And we are at 164 degrees Fahrenheit and it's feeling thicker. Like I'm feeling a little bit of a film at the base here, even though I'm constantly stirring and also the milk itself is feeling thicker. Interesting. When I'm looking closely, I'm seeing little bitsies in the milk, almost as if I have a coagulant in there already. Let me see if I can show you that. Can you see it? You see the little bitsies in there? That is strange. What the heck? It's coagulating itself. Do you see that? It is self-coagulating. What is happening? This did not happen last time. I'm very confused. Like, what the heck is going on? Is this another soy-free tofu making itself? It hasn't even started boiling yet. Like, that's the weird part. Okay, we're at 174, 180. I don't know what to do now. We could take this in several directions. I'm not really sure what we should be doing right now. Should we cook it for longer? Should we let it boil? What do we do? Um, I am gonna let this simmer for 10 minutes. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick to the plan, even though it's not looking like the plan. Okay, I turned the heat down to five. And look at this foam on the edges. It looks like egg whites. Ooh. Okay, Google, stop timer. Right, so it has been 10 minutes and I'm gonna just turn off the heat and let it sit here for 15 minutes. Um, yeah, 15 minutes is what we usually do. After we add the coagulant, we cover it. Clearly, we already have curds, but I'm just going to follow the process anyways. And while we wait, oh, hi, sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. Chester is sleeping and I guess I won't disturb him. The other cat likes to sleep in dark places, so we're not going to get any good footage of him. Also, I'm organizing the videos here so that they're easier to put together for, um, for you. <laughs> Take a look at these curds. I don't think they're any different from 15 minutes ago, but anyways, here we go. And nothing stuck on the bottom. That's nice. Now, we'll put it in my favorite tofu press. Let's fold the cloth as neatly as we can. We're going to go ahead and twist the top down, add the maximum amount of pressure that we can in this press. There we go. And then pour off the excess whey. All right, whey taste test. Nice, mostly clear broth. Mmm, it tastes slightly sweet, but it's quite pleasant. It's nice and savory. Can you use it as milk? I don't know, I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of milky, so I kind of feel like if I heated this up and added a coagulant, I mean, I just wonder, I just wonder what it would do, but not this time. This time, let's just get straight through. Let's get straight through to our tofu, okay? It's the next day and the moment of truth. Let's quickly get this out. So 
So is that a good value compared to store-bought tofu? I'll do the math and I'll put it up on screen. Whether it's technically a good value compared to soy tofu, I don't really care. I just am so excited for ch real chickpea tofu. I mean, high protein chickpea tofu. The first time I tried this, it did not work at all. And yes, I over soaked the chickpeas and left them in the fridge probably way too long. But it was such a disaster, I just didn't want to try again. I put it on the back burner, but finally, Oh my God, do you see this? Do you see this bouncy quality? Oh, I like it. Nice, nice, nice. Like, I mean the bounce. Do you see that bounciness? It's really, I mean, this might be better than the fava bean tofu in terms of the bounciness. I mean, clearly we did a good job in isolating that starch. I'm stoked, I'm stoked. Oh, nice. All right, taste test time. It is not what I thought it would be. It's soft, but it has like this meaty quality to it. If you're expecting this to be anything like whole chickpea tofu, it's not. I don't know if this is gonna make sense, but it pulls back at your teeth. And the taste is chickpea, but without the graininess, the fibriness of a real chickpea. I mean, a whole chickpea, this is real chickpea. It's just the protein part. Mainly. Okay, so we have to do our usual air fryer test using the usual dry coating. Nutritional yeast, onion powder, paprika, black pepper, salt. I would put garlic powder, but I'm all out. We're just gonna mix it and coat. On one side, I'm gonna add oil to the pieces. For the air fryer test, we have two each of plain with oil, seasoned with oil, totally plain, and then seasoned without oil. The plain one is plain as you can imagine. The outside, though it looks like it could be crispy, is more chewy than anything else. The inside is tender and nice with a mild hint of chickpea flavor. Oil always helps to make the edges crispier, still quite plain though. However, just a little sprinkle of salt can enhance the natural chickpea flavor. Obviously, the seasoned tofu will be delicious. And with oil, the coating gets crunchier. Love it. I would like to just stand here and eat these, but I'm gonna save them for my salad later because we have more tofu to cook. For this preparation, I'm gonna be boiling the tofu. I thought this would be a good test because usually chickpea tofu that you're gonna see around YouTube a lot, it's the kind that's made in a similar fashion to polenta. And personally, I like it. I mean, I have my own video using chickpea flour to make Burmese tofu, but it's high carb and doesn't do well in boiling water in braised dishes. So we're gonna see how this holds up. Just gonna plop three in there. Okay, one more. <laughs> no signs of melting. No signs of anything negative to report. But nobody eats tofu just boiled. I mean, some people maybe, I don't know. I don't know you, maybe you do. So I'm gonna let this boil for like two minutes. You never need to boil tofu for very long. <laughs> For a boost of umami flavor, I'm gonna add a bit of mushroom seasoning. Ooh. We're good. The tofu has still got a firm texture. Surely I'll bring it out. Ooh, hot, hot. But it still has a bouncy, ooh. It's more tender, but it still has that bouncy texture. I'm gonna have a little bit. This makes the tofu like 
juicier and actually quite good. This is my plan to use red miso paste. This is just soybeans, rice, salt, fermented. And it's gonna add a nice flavor. I just want like a teaspoon and a half maybe, maybe two teaspoons, something like that. Actually, we don't need the heat on for this. Mmm, perfect. Now for the taste test. Mmm, it's absolutely perfect. I still have a bunch of chickpea tofu left over and I am pretty sure I'm gonna make this um, again and again. Will you give it a try? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have suggestions for what I should do with the rest of this, let me know there too. I would really appreciate your suggestions. My friends, I was so ready to show you a fail today. Based on my previous experience, I was shocked when it turned out and made one of the best soy-free tofus in this series. Why those failed and this one succeeded, I am not sure. But I did get another big bag of chickpeas from a different brand to try and find out. So subscribe if you haven't already, turn on those notifications, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to check out AG1 and use my link to get those two free gifts. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.